August 8, 2013. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 26 of You Can Bet on That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet on That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and as always, I'm here with Dr. Mike. Hello. So, Mike, how has your gambling been going since our last episode? Well, I'd have to put it in one word, and I would say the word would be suck. We're, it just hasn't been good. It hasn't. Both of I mean, us, we're having a bad year. It's, yeah. It, and it's not terrible. I mean, it hasn't been like mega huge losses or anything like that, but it's just... Well, I, it's been bad. How often do been, we do we go like to the casino and record a winning session? I mean, it's it's been a while it, since we. It used to be about fifty fifty. You can't yeah. ask for more than that. It's just been terrible lately. It's been terrible lately. Well, the thing that gets me, like on the last trip, last uh, weekend, it wasn't that it was particularly brutal. Where it's like, oh my god, you know, how many seven outs in a row can you have? That kind of thing. It was just kind of blasé and. The whole night, it just never took off. Yeah, right. There was there was never any moment of excitement. Right. I mean, you can have a losing night, but if you have that one shooter that has a great role, when you go home, you remember that role, and you're kind of happy about it, even though you may have lost. But... We didn't have anything like that last week. You're right. It was, it was just, just kind of, it was either slowly chipping away at you or a really bad roll. Right. There was nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The only good thing I can say about last weekend was we had Ron on our table dealing us yeah. craps. It's always a pleasure because he's a good, good dealer. Yep, it's fine. And uh, the casino host stopped by and talked to me. Yeah, you have and, a good host uh, now. I have a very good host now. Um, he's always right there, always has a lot of stuff to tell me, and uh, his name's Alan. He's at Harris Rincon, and he's an excellent host. Yeah, that's good. So that that does make it a little nicer. It does. It, it certainly does. But it's been a bad year. And, you know, I'm even down for poker this year, and I have never in a calendar year in August been down. You are the tightest poker player probably there is. For you to be T- down. <laughs> tight aggressive. Have you done? I'm well, tight aggressive. I tight. Well, kind anyway, of aggressive. I could, I, I'm, I could potentially have a losing year. It'd be my first losing calendar year for poker, just for poker. Yeah. But uh, yeah, first, so. first losing year ever for for, for me for poker for poker right, ever. Right. Yeah, ever. So that's how bad that's it is. Good. But at least somebody in your family is winning money. Oh man, I'll tell you. So my sister in law Eleanor was up at Rincon. Her birthday was recently recent, and she uh, headed up to Rincon with some of her family. And uh they were up there for a little while, a couple of nights, and uh she played some, she plays slots, and she played a little bit on the on the floor and uh you know was losing and you know, oh well it's gonna be you know a, a losing uh uh trip. And so before she left, she decided to go into the high limit uh slot room, right? Yeah. And she doesn't she only plays the five dollar slot. So high limit is basically five dollar coins and, and higher. Yeah, it's usually like fifteen dollar in. Yeah, if you have to play three coins in at five dollars, it's fifteen dollars, right? right? So she started playing a few machines. She was playing some two coin in, so that was ten dollars a pull. And and uh I, I think she won a couple of small pots, like around a thousand dollars, you know, something like that. Uh and uh was moving from slot to slot and, you know, tried another one and, and actually won like another thousand. She moves around a lot. It's, yeah. It's probably not a bad thing. It's to not do. a bad thing. And, uh, Eleanor, I'm sorry if I'm getting some of the details of this story wrong, but anyway, she, she had kind of made her money back and it's like, oh, maybe I should get out of here. But she decided, no, I'm going to, you know, try one more machine here. And she went over to a machine. It was a $15 in machine. I showed you this machine the other yeah, day. Yeah. And, uh, she got, she hit, you know, the three symbols for the jackpot. That gets multiplied. It was one right, of those multiplying right, things. Right, right, She won $50,000. Nice. Five zero thousand dollars dollars $50,000. That is Oh, nice. my gosh. She's telling us this story. She she told the story in much longer form, you know, to add a little drama to it. But I wonder you, how long did it take to pay her? Yeah, I, you know, she did say she had to sit around for a while because yeah. they they came over and actually checked the machine, opened right. it up, oh, make yeah. sure they you know, check everything. Yeah, you know, to make sure yeah. it was uh, legit. I'll tell you what you do while they're checking the machine. They'll do all that and everything. You send one of your friends or relatives, whoever it is, over and get you a nice big ice cream cone. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that, that'd be I don't good. think see, I don't think her relatives were close by. She could have called. They might have been. Oh, I would have called for service. Yeah. Bring me a nice big ice cream cone. Swirl. I'd yeah. get a swirl. Yeah. Now sit there and enjoy that. Now, now you hit a fifteen thousand dollars slot five once. Thousand. One five thousand. Yeah. And weren't we on our way to get ice cream when we you decided to play? We were on our way play? to get ice cream. So that's yep. what you've got on the brain. We now. were on our way to get ice cream. We saw these two. Let me say scantily dressed women. Yeah. Standing by a slot machine. Right. So, you know, of course, we forgot all about the ice cream. We walked over there. As soon as they saw us, they took off. <laughs> but, you know, we were used to that. Sure. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I sat down and put, um, I don't know, it wasn't very much, $20, $30 in the slot machine. It right. Was, and we, it was a dollar slot. We we had like two hours before we had to catch a plane, too, right? right? It was yeah, Our we trip were, was basically over. We were done. This was at uh, Bellagio. Bellagio, yeah. correct. Yeah. And um, you wa- you had walked away. Yeah, I wasn't for playing, some reason. Yeah. I I pulled once, nothing happened. I pulled again, and I'm not a slot player, so you know all these symbols came up, and I'm trying to figure out what it was. And this elderly lady, it was one of those circular bank of slot machines, right. and they had a woman actually in the middle. Right. This was back when you still had coin. coin in. Yeah, there right. were still coins. Yeah. Right. She leaned over the top and said, oh, congratulations. And I'm looking up at her and I'm thinking, what is this woman talking about? And she she obviously realized I had no clue. And she goes, you just won 15000 <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a good trip. That's nice. Well, it took a while to pay. It yeah, did, it did. Too. Right, yeah. yeah. And we never got ice cream. But anyway, congratulations to Eleanor. Oh, my gosh, 50000 I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's one thing. Oh, wow, I won 5000 on a slot. Hey, that's great. But 50000 bucks, man. I hope she was up. For the weekend. Yeah, I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she was. I hope she had an overall winning session or winning a weekend, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we wanted to mention, we have a correction from last week. Yeah, we we did a little research, or at least I asked a guy I know yeah. who, who plays the track a lot. Last, Yeah, last week we talked about horse racing, and we yeah. talked about the pick six. And you thought that maybe they actually pay if you hit five out of six. Yeah, and it turns out they do. Yeah, and I said, no, that's not true. But yeah. you you yeah. remembered, yeah. They, they said they do. I asked him, and this uh, patient of mine, he's, he's hit the five out of six several times, and he actually told me it was interesting because there's uh, several books written on pick six strategy. Mm-hmm. And what they do most of the time is they, they have betting strategies to optimize hitting five out of six. And hoping to luck into the six out of six. So okay, so the strategy is specifically to go after the five. Go after the five, right? Right, because you have a much better chance of doing that. Sure. And they, it's basically you know taking different horses and different races. And he explained it to me; it was way over my head. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, so evidently people actually study this. Okay, so yes, pick six, and I guess this is pretty consistent among race tracks. They do have a five that pays off. And it can, was he telling you that he saw, what was the lowest payout? Oh, he seen? saw the lowest of a pick six at $80. All six? All six. At $80. Bucks. So I wonder what yeah. the five paid yeah. off. <laughs> the like, five probably paid nothing. <laughs> it was but, like uh, 210. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, that was the lowest he's seen. And he, and of course he's seen like three or 400,000 for yeah. the, the highest. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So we got that taken care of. So there's, um, uh, CNBC has a new reality show that's supposed to premiere next month, mm-hmm. September 10th. It's supposed to come out and it's called Money Talks. And it's, there's a little controversy going into it. The, the show is a reality show that follows a sports handicapper in Las Vegas. And this guy's name is Steve Stevens. At least that's one of his names. That's what he's calling himself it's these days, days, right? Exactly. And uh, supposedly he is this really great sports handicapper in Vegas and, you know, sells advice and that kind of thing. And some people have come out and said, hey, this guy is no good. You know, he maybe he shouldn't be on a, you know, reality show, a TV show. No good as, as in not no good at picking sports, but no good as a person. As in a crook. Yeah. Yeah. So it turns out that his real name is Darren Nataro. And he's actually got some convictions here. I, I printed it out and looking here. He got one year in jail for his part in a Las Vegas telemarketing scheme that built elderly citizens across the nation out of at least $234,000. This was back in, uh, 
I think the late, yeah, it was 1999. So already, you know, this guy is, you know, he's like a con man. He's, he's, right. you know, um, he's taking grandma's money to, to further his, his lifestyle. Yeah. And he, it, uh, apparently, you know, it wasn't the first time he, he got uh, caught, I guess, in 1995 and then an, another time in 2001. And his real name is Darren Nataro. And he's, he runs this place called <clears throat> VIP Sports out of Las Vegas. And apparently it claims that they have a VIP sports has a 71.5% win rate <laughs> on picking games, sports, right. which is ludicrous. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, if you had that good a, a record at doing it, first of all, why would you be selling that information to anyone? You, right, you make, wouldn't have to. Yeah. Right? I mean, You'd just be down at the sports book making bets. So he's, you know, he's changed his name. He's got a, a, a disreputable past. He's claiming things that he can, you know, that 71.5%. That this article that we were reading even said that a lot of people who are uh, very knowledgeable in within the sports betting world in Las Vegas have never even heard of this guy, or at least under his his name, Steve Stevens. Right. The, well, the bookmaker at Caesars said he had never heard of him. Yeah. yeah. So you know, and they probably know everybody in town, right? They probably talk to each other. So he's gotten, who knows, he's finagled his way into a reality show. Maybe he pitched it to the network and it's going to be following him around. I, first of all, the, the name of the show is Money Talks. Yeah, I don't get that either. When I saw that, that kind of, I was like, didn't make sense. I thought it was a money, a, um, you know, an investment advice yeah, talk show. The, it's on CNBC, which is a finance network. Network, right. right. So if you see, oh, there's a show called Money Talks, right. you figure it's going to be a couple of guys sitting around talking about the stock market. Or, right, you know, exactly. Investment, or, stuff like it, that. Right, some kind of investment. But no, it's a it's a reality show following this guy, Steve Stevens, and all his other bookmakers – in the day-to-day -day operations. And supposedly he's going to come out September 10th. And I just don't see how you can make a show out of that for one thing, but we'll you know. see. And CNBC, they, they, uh, released a statement that said, we are aware of Steve Stevens' 1999 conviction. And while we are very clear in the press release that VIP sports clients risk big dollars in the hopes that Stevens and his agents have the expertise to consistently deliver winners, viewers should tune in and decide for themselves, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I don't know if they're, they really knew going in that he had this past or they're just, yeah, you know, trying to act like they do. It's now hard or... to say. I mean, at this point, they probably have to say they knew, but they may have known. <laughs> Maybe initially. they did. Sure. Maybe they did. You know, it's, it's like I've said in the past, it's bad publicity is just as good as good publicity. And, and people will tune in to, people will tune in to watch the car wreck. Yeah. And, you know? and, you know, maybe they'll be rooting for him or against it anyway. I'll, I guess yeah. we're going to tune in. Yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you what though. And, I, and this is something that our good friend Paul would say about this. Uh huh. He would say he's not going to watch that because that just, it's like putting money in the pockets of a bad person. Sure. Yeah. You know, and that would be one reason not to watch it, but I'll probably still watch the first episode. Well, we've to, talked about it. Now we've got to, to watch see. it, right? Yeah, I just want to see. We have a certain journalistic uh, <laughs> integrity yeah. that we have to right. maintain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about that more when we get close to the, the uh, <laughs> airtime. All right. We wanted to talk this episode about etiquette, gambling etiquette. And some of the things that maybe you should, should not do, things that we've seen in the past that we've liked or not liked. Yeah. Uh, so let's jump into it. I think one of the worst things that you can do at a table, and I'm sure I was guilty of this early on, it's just, you, you think you're helping people, but it's giving advice. Yes, it is really. I, re I really think that as far as etiquette goes, that is the worst. You thing. don't want to give unsolicited <laughs> advice. And you see this a lot, particularly at a blackjack table. Oh, specifically at blackjack. When, a, you know, a player's telling another player, oh, you should hit that. Or, or after the fact, oh, you shouldn't have hit that. You know, that was right. stupid. You know, right. they're not asking for advice. If they ask you, that's one thing. But everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody thinks they're right when it comes to a game like blackjack. Exactly. And the thing about it is, is if you... If you do give some unsolicited advice, it can 
it typically can only lead to bad things. Yeah. You know, bad feelings between you and the other person or, or a third person chimes in and says, no, you know, they're right or you're right. Or it's just not a good thing. Right. Yeah. You, usually you don't get a response like, Oh, I, Oh, thanks for, you know, letting me know. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll know how to play better in the future. (laughs) What you usually get is, no, you know, you're not supposed to hit a 16 against a 10. Yeah. You're I've supposed heard, to stay. I've heard people say, you play your own hand, I'll play the way I want to play. Yeah. You hear that a yeah. lot. Uh, so I'll you, tell you what's worse than a player giving another player advice is the dealer giving the player's advice. Uh, yeah, es- especially since you and I have seen many times the yeah. dealer giving the, the wrong, wrong advice. advice. Okay, yeah. and by wrong, we're talking about basic strategy, right. which has been mathematically proven to be the right way to play if you're not counting cards. Followed followed by the dealer saying something like, well, I've dealt for 40 years, and I've seen this a million times. Yeah. So yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And along these same lines, too, you shouldn't complain about the way that somebody played because you think that their play affects your wins and losses. Right. You see this a lot. It's like, oh my gosh, how could you have hit that 13 if you hadn't? The dealer would have busted and, you know, it messed me up. Right. Well, you know, whether a person made the right play or not, in the long run, it all works out. Right. Cause half the time it helps you is, I mean, it hurt, helps you as much as it hurts. That's you. right. A bad play by another player could easily help you. Yeah. And you don't remember those times. No, no. Right? You remember the times when it hurts you because they're more painful. Yeah. I'll tell you what you do. If you're on a table with a player who, say, isn't playing the way you think they should play, or is just rude or obnoxious or so drunk that you just don't want to do it, just get up and walk away. Right, yeah. Because no matter where you are, there are plenty of more tables. Uh, even And even if there aren't, let's say you're at you know a place with two craps tables and you know, they're both full and you've just, the guy next to you is driving you crazy. Go take a break. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's just the easiest thing to do. Yep. It's true. And kind of on the converse side too, if let's say you're playing and somebody is giving you unsolicited advice, instead of arguing with them, right? just kind of, oh yeah, okay. Or just right. blow exactly. them off. I mean, don't be rude, but just, oh exactly. yeah, yeah, that would have been a good move or whatever. Yeah. And if they keep hounding you, yeah, get up and walk away. Right. Yeah. The best thing to do is to say, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. I see what you're saying. Cause and just leave it at that. The worst thing you can do is get into an argue with, argument with them because it would be like arguing religion with somebody, right? Because right. they're set in their ways, right? right? And if you're a basic strategy player like we are, we're set in our, our ways. ways, right? You know, we have math to back us up but <laughs> well it doesn't matter i mean you know because your opinion's your opinion whether you could back it up perfectly but another person will disagree with you yep i mean i've you've actually and i know you've heard this people say oh yeah i i know what i know what the math is but it doesn't work like that right <laughs> you sure. know i've heard that before. oh yeah right exactly <laughs> It doesn't it doesn't apply to the real world. Well, yeah. you hear you, know. you hear that on the craps table. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, they'll say, "Oh no, no, no!" There have been so many fives coming up. You know, <laughs> that's right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of craps, here's another uh, etiquette issue: when the dice have been pushed to the, to the shooter, when they're about to be thrown, don't have your hands down in the middle of the table. Now, this really is etiquette. It doesn't matter whether your hands are down there or not as far right. as the movement of the game, but people don't like it. Yeah. Because right. if your hands are down there and the dice hit your hands and then a seven comes up and everybody loses, they're going to blame you. Oh, if, you know, if he didn't have his hands down there, right? The hands made the seven come up. Well, we know the hands didn't make the seven come it's up. It's just a politeness thing. Right. And so people really don't like <laughs> Although it. Although this week, and tell the story what happened that lady this week. Oh, yeah. Did. So, so we're at the table this week. And the point was eight. And you had quite a bit of money on the hard eight. Right. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, so, uh, again, to remind our listeners, uh, at uh, Harris Rincon, uh, the game is based on dice and cards. So when you roll the dice, they take the numbers from the dice and they turn over two cards on the table. Right. So yeah. uh, that just is to get around the law in California. So anyway, we, we, I, were you shooting? No, no. Okay. I think it was, was a, a different guy. shooter. Well, anyway, the point was a, you had a lot of money on the hard eight right. and the dice go up in the air and a woman on the other side of the table puts her hands down and the dice hit her hands. Right. right? And they go down and everybody just kind of gasps and she's, you know, she turns red and Ron, 
I think, was turning the cards, cards at are, that point. Right. And he was said, please let this be a hard eight, right? Because it's like, please don't make this be a seven. The woman right. would feel bad. Everybody would feel <laughs> terrible. And so Ron turns over the cards. Hard eight. eight. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it was a woo! great. Yeah. And I, we all pointed at her and she's like, you know, relieved. relieved. Yeah. Everyone but, felt good about that. But you know, it just goes to show you, right? I mean, you know, the it hands doesn't... down on the table could give you a winning number two, right? right? It's just that when it, when it does result in a seven right. coming up, people, you know, hate it, right? Well, here's so. the difference. We're telling this story because it worked out good. Right. That's our, that's our take on things. We wouldn't even be mentioning this if a seven had come up. Right. Yeah, right. We, we wouldn't, wouldn't even have, have told that story. We wouldn't right. have told that story. But there are nine other people <laughs> like us who would only tell that story if a seven came up. They'd be at work on Monday telling them, oh, I had a lot of money on the eight. And, you know, yeah, this exactly. woman put her hand down. Yeah. So. And I, you know what I like to tell people, too, is I say, well, you know, when somebody puts their hands down on the table – Seven comes up more than any other number, <laughs> yeah. which is true with every role, right? But if right. you're talking to somebody who doesn't understand math in the game, right, it's like, really? Yeah. Yes. Even if you throw dice off the table, the next roll, seven, seven. comes up more than any other number. <laughs> Statistically. I can prove it to you. <laughs> yeah. So at least our, <laughs> as far as etiquette goes, don't put your hands down on the table and don't complain about people who put their hands down on the table either, because it doesn't matter. Typically, they're not doing it on purpose. No. Like, this lady didn't even realize the dice were coming. Right, right, And she obviously was a new player. Right, a lot. that's usually what it is, is people who aren't familiar with the game, they don't realize that they need to get their hands out of the way. Although sometimes it's people who obviously know the game and, you know, still... Yeah, well, we've all done that, where you've, you know, you've intentionally, you know, had your hands out in the field while some guy's (laughs) trying to roll. All right, tell him this story. (laughs) This is funny. This was at Harris a a little less than a year ago. Well, we were at Harris in Las Vegas, and um, a guy, an elderly man was rolling on one side of the table and we were on the other side of the table and his point was five. And I was just praying for a five to come up. Yeah. So I was taking my finger and I was circling where a five would be on the field. There is no five in the field. Right. But between the four and the, um, the nine, the nine. Yeah. That's where the five would go. If the five were in the field, it'd be between the four four and the nine. nine. (laughs) I'm circling the the five with my finger uh-huh. and I kept doing it. I mean, as soon as he rolled, I would start circling, but I picked my finger up before, before the dice were even sent, sent to, him. to him. Yeah. yeah before right, the exactly. dice were even, as soon as the guy started to move the dice, I picked my finger up, right. you know, just so I wouldn't hit him. Right, right. But boy, he did not like that. And he <laughs> was just glaring. And so he did two or three, four get your rolls. hands up. He was yelling he, yeah, at he you, was right? Yelling you know, get, get your, my hands and, up. You know, and the like, dice aren't even about to right. be thrown. I'm right. like, right. well, the <laughs> dice are still in the middle. You know, there's no, so I was just smiling. I didn't say anything and I'm circling. And so he, after a few rolls, he rolls again, and boom, five comes up. Yeah. And I, as loud as I could, yelled, you're welcome! <laughs> you pointed out of it. You're welcome. <laughs> now, is that good etiquette? Yeah. Ah, no, no. Not really. We're telling this story. It's all. <laughs> and he was getting so upset. I couldn't help. And then I didn't tease him anymore after that. Oh, God. That was great. That was a good one. I, I'll tell you, there's, <laughs> there is a woman out at Rincon who – is a regular yeah who only plays the field and i had i had never seen her before but a few weeks back she was there we were at the table and she has this habit of she puts big stacks of chips out in the field usually like big stacks of five dollar chips right right with maybe like a couple of ones on top and it'll be a weird amount it'll you know be like 83 dollars right and she won't put the bet in front of her Closest to her, she'll move it to some strange part in the field, and she'll kind of tip the stack a little bit so that it almost might fall over, and then she like taps it a bunch of times. She plays with it. She plays it and crosses herself. Yeah, she she crosses herself. And And so I'm thinking, oh well, you know, big deal, right? She's just got eccentric, and you know, got a little OCD going on. Yeah, something like that. And she'd do that, you know, and people would roll, and sometimes she would win. Sometimes you know, a twelve would come up, she'd get paid triple. triple, You know, she was doing like this. So she kind of came and went, and she was odd, yeah. but, you know, whatever. She leans over people. That's the thing I don't like about yeah. her. There'll be no spot, and she'll reach over you to put her bet down. I mean, just put it down. I know, right. Gosh. I know. So, and and at one point, a player 
touched her chips. I don't know if no, it did the dealer. Well, did. but this was before that. A, oh. a, a play a, a player actually touched Touch her her chips. her chips, right? And she was don't touch my chips. And that's like okay, so. Fine. I mean, it's true. You don't want a player touching your chips. I mean, right. who knows what they might do. I don't do. think it was intentional. No. Well, so she's playing for a while. And then at one point, you were kind of close to her. You and I were not yeah. standing next to each other. Right. But you were kind of close to her. And this young guy comes up and wants to play at the table. And there was room. Mm -hmm. And he kind of came up. Very mm -hmm. nice guy. He was very polite. Yeah. He said, oh, you know, can I, can I get in here? And she kind of just glared at him. There was plenty of room. Yeah. And he said, oh, or would you prefer me to, to go over on the other side of you there? And her response was something like, just tell me where you want me to go. Yeah. You, you know, just really <laughs> he, rude. He was very, you know, set back. And he's like, oh, I don't care. I just, I want to be polite. You know, which side do you want me to play on? And then she was so rude. And he finally just kind of stepped back and like, what? And walked away. <laughs> yeah, He just went to another table, which, you know, on his behalf, kudos to him. Yeah. He didn't argue with her yeah, or that's say true, anything. Right, yeah. He just like, okay, this lady's got a problem. I'm going to go somewhere else. Right. Very so nice. So I'm watching this and thinking, oh, this isn't just, you know, an eccentric. This is like she's a kinda, bad person, she's right? She's kind of mean, yeah. So a little while later, again, she always, she'd take her, she was rolling at this point. She right. had the dice and she kind of tipped her, you know, chips in there and, you know, made, put them in an angle and tapped them and crossed herself. And the dealer who who was familiar with her Without thinking, went out and straightened her chips, which they they always do. Sure, I mean, dealers I, will keep their end of the table straight. Yeah, because with the dice, you know, hit yeah. it or whatever, it's it's more likely to tip over if they're not. Right, straight. they don't want a big mess because then they got to figure out whose money's whose. Right. So yeah, especially while well, I was going to say with her, she's got this big huge stack. Yeah, it's always so a it's ridiculously really important. To, yeah. that it you know not get knocked over. Right? right. Then how much did you have out there? Right, right. So he straightened the stack, and as soon as he did it, he realized. He shouldn't have done it because she doesn't like that. Yeah, he, he was he, familiar with he her. He was familiar with right? her. Right. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, you know. He apologized yeah. immediately. He said, oh, you know, I, I'm sorry I forgot. And she glared at him and pulled most of her bet back and looked at him and said, forget this. And I'm thinking, oh, God, what, what a terrible oh, person. But, right. And then she said, you're, you're a creep. You're a creep. Yeah, that's what she told him. So I lost it. <laughs> And Lorenzo, and, the guy, the dealer, Lorenzo's a nice guy. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. He See, wasn't trying to be but, mean. Or... You know, when she's, you're a creep to the dealer. I looked at her and said, wow, you are a horrible woman. <laughs> and you know me, this is not typical of something that I, I don't no, like conflict. No, that'd be this more is... like me. That'd be more like me. That's why I was shocked. I was so shocked I couldn't say anything because that's what I was thinking. But you said it. And usually it's the other way around. Oh, my God. And I said, you are a, and she, she pretty much ignored me. Yeah. And and continued to play. She was rolling the dice at that time and suddenly started doing it faster instead of going through her big routine and right. you know only put out like $5 in the field every time. But she stayed there shortly afterwards you and I colored up and left and and she stayed there. Yeah. So, no. you know, it, I don't oh, know. She if, wasn't really offended, yeah. I don't and, think. And you know, afterwards I felt bad cuz I'm thinking, you know, this woman probably has a mental illness. Right. Right. And so, you know, I should probably be more aware you know, of that. Yeah, and you know why you should should take it easy on her. She probably lost all of her money in a sports betting scheme. <laughs> From a guy from in Las uh, Vegas, Steve Stevens. Steve Stevens, right? Yeah, and she's just she's, she's just, just trying she's to probably trying to get back to even, right? <laughs> so I did feel bad, at, you know. I mean, it's the kind of thing where you know I was kind of it's like, no, I I don't feel bad. I mean, Lorenzo's a good guy, and she was, you know, it's one thing to be rude, but to right. you know be and what if, it was a strange thing to say. You're a creep. Yeah, a creep, <laughs> right? That, that is yeah. so. She's messed up, and and so I feel bad only because she probably has a mental illness, and you know right. I should have kept well, my mouth shut. I hope, shut, I hope that, uh, your little tirade there isn't what's causing us to lose all your yeah the karma the karma yeah. yeah you think we're getting hammered on that could be yeah. could be next time I see her I'll I'll apologize and give her flowers <laughs> <laughs> or buy her an ice cream <laughs> or or just walk over and knock all her chips over. <laughs> hey, <laughs> That's not a bad idea too. Maybe she'd leave the table. Uh, Let's, uh, and this, since we're talking about Lorenzo too, just talking about etiquette, and I, this is kind of tangential to etiquette, but you know, when you're at a table, for, for me, the most important thing at any table, other than maybe, you know, make sure you played a 3 2 blackjack table instead of 6 5, <laughs> right? Something like that. It's the dealers. Yeah. And how nice they are, how accommodating, how good they are as, as dealers, you know, right. mechanically, but really just, 
being nice. Right. It, for me, it's the single most important thing in a casino. Yeah. I, I completely and, agree. I mean, when I it don't comes know how recreational gambling. other people feel about that, but you're there to have a good time. Yeah. You know, you're not making a living at this. You're there to have a good time. You know, some people say, well, it's the booze. They like to drink. <laughs> and, and I can see that too. But, you know, if you're there with your friends and you're having a good time, if the dealers aren't good, it ruins the whole thing. Yeah, it does for me. You have to have nice dealers. Yeah. And so luckily where we usually go to Rincon, they're nice. and They're very nice. I'll tell you too. And most Harris properties I know. Are Again, most, uh, guys, we're not shilling for Caesars, but that is what we found certainly recently yes. is um, the dealers at Caesars properties are, are very nice. And you know what I did kind of hear? I can't remember if I read this online or heard it on another podcast, but people were kind of complaining about Bellagio dealers. Yeah, uh-huh. I can and, see that. You know, I don't know that we've ever had downright rude dealers but they're not pleasant they're not pleasant they're not no, friendly no. you'll never get i mean i shouldn't say never because maybe in the sure, past you know I talk mean, to me yeah. but you'll very seldom find a dealer at bellagio who will chat with you yeah i mean just chat with you about not about the game but just ask you oh you know where are you from or right you know usually you go into a caesar's property if they don't know you, they'll say, oh, where are you from? After, you know, a yeah, few minutes. Right. And then you'll say, you know, San Diego. And, oh, yeah, how are those Padres doing? You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right. And it's, and and if you're the kind of person who doesn't like chit-chat, right. you, maybe when they try to instigate it, if you just, you know, give a short answer or whatever, right. okay, well, then they won't continue. But right. I don't want to dump on Bellagio. It's just that's kind of been my that's, experience. Right. Caesars properties, at least in Las Vegas, they've right. been better than they used to be. Because it used to be that way at Caesars, too. You're right. Caesars. You'd go into yeah. Caesars and they'd be just kind of grumpy old guys right. And dealing the games for sixty years, right? And, yeah. and the and the cocktail waitresses were the same. Yeah, maybe seventy years. Seventy been doing years they've been yeah. doing cocktails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On that note, we want to talk a little bit about tipping too. It doesn't take much to tip. I guess we have kind of talked about tipping before a in a previous bit, yeah. podcast, but you know, really, these dealers, uh, it's the, generally they're getting pay, paid minimum wage or close to minimum wage, and they make money on tips. And a lot of people don't tip, and it doesn't take much to tip. Like when I tip at the craps table, I'll just make a $1 pass line bet for them every once in a while. Right. And already I'm tipping way more than most people on the oh, table. Way more. Right. Most people don't tip anything. Right. Or at the blackjack table, just put a little a dollar in front of your bet for them. Right. You know, it doesn't the, have to be a lot. I had a dealer once tell me, and this was quite a few years ago. He said, we were talking about something about tipping. And somebody at the table had said something. Oh, it's just a dollar. And the dealer looked at him and he and he said something that I'll never forget. He said, It's a dollar right now, but this place is open twenty four seven. And over a week, all those dollars add into a lot of money, and that's how we make our living. Yeah. So even a dollar for the dealer is huge if everybody did a dollar. Oh my you know, gosh, if, if everyone everybody did it, yeah. if everyone tipped a dollar, say every you know, tenth hand of blackjack. Right. They'd have a huge amount of money at yeah, the end. Yeah. Because they don't lose. Right. <laughs> if that if that bet loses, they might lose the dollar, but when it wins, they win two. And right. Because they get the thing. they get the, the the amount that the person tipped plus the winnings. They plus take the winnings. both. I don't know if we've right. talked about that before, but yeah. When you tip for them, you make a bet for them, they take your initial bet and the winnings as right. their tip. Right. So That's when you win, they get two bucks. And yeah. that you know, it adds up so quick. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about etiquette? I guess we'll say one more thing, too. I, I forgot about this. We, we talked about this. If you are playing the don't pass oh, in craps, right, right. and uh, again, don't pass is usually the opposite of what everybody else is doing at the table. Uh, a good etiquette there is just kind of silently make your bets and don't cheer when you win because usually everybody else at the table is losing. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, you know... Blend into Co- the collect your money and be quiet. Yeah, it's kind of like if you're at a you know sports bar in uh, Pittsburgh <laughs> and everyone's rooting for the Steelers and they're playing your team, which you know let's say in this case is the Chargers, mm-hmm. and the Chargers happen to be winning. I would just keep my mouth quiet <laughs> and just you know it, inside grin and outside be oh the darn it you know. Yeah. But it, it's the same thing at a yeah. table. Pittsburgh's a good a good example. A good example, Pittsburgh, yeah, because yeah, you yeah. might not come out alive. <laughs> so. But, you know, there are times when there'd be don't player at the table and I'll strike up a conversation with them. If, if oh, things are sure. going, oh, it's like, oh, things are going well for you or oh, you're doing the right way. Yeah. And a lot of times they will want to talk because they're familiar enough with the game. Right. You know, and but they're not going to sit there and cheer. And, you know, if they're if they're if they have good etiquette. Yeah. Right. It's it's funny because craps is one of those games where you can play two different ways that kind of, in a sense, not 
exactly, but in a sense oppose each other. So, you know, I mean, there's plenty of times where Doan and Pass both lose right. and they both win at times, but you kind of feel like you're playing a different way. It doesn't happen in blackjack, right? No. You're all against the dealer. Right. And you uh, all have your own hands too. You, you it's all it's, have it's your completely own hands, different in jack. Right. You're not, blackjack. it's not a community type game. Yeah. And that's, and by the same token, that's why I like crap so much because yeah. it's a community it's game. It's fun when everybody's, yeah. When winning. we're all together. Yeah. I mean, you win a blackjack hand, just a regular hand. How many times do you high five? five people around right. you. Yeah, because maybe the other guy next to you lost. He's playing right. the exact same way as you. Right. He just busted, right? He just <laughs> busted, right? So, you know, you you don't get too crazy. Heart 8 comes up in um, craps because it hits some lady's hand. And, I mean, we're all high five and yep. everyone's screaming. Everybody's happy. Yeah. So, All right. If anybody else has some etiquette that uh, they might like us to talk about, drop us an email. Yeah, we'll or maybe just even a a uh, story where somebody used bad etiquette or was rude. I'd like to. I'd like to hear those. Yeah, bad etiquette stories are more fun, fun. than good yeah. etiquette stories. Yeah, so we were playing at the table and nobody put their hands down. Yeah, that's quite a story. Yeah, that's good. No, I just like to hear bad. You know, when it someone is. It makes for a good story. You, totally. Sometimes rude. you might not want to be there. You might, we weren't right. laughing at the time, but uh, yeah. All right, so um, let's move on to the poker home game segment of our show. This is the segment where we talk about poker games that you're not going to see dealt in a casino, but that you might play when you get together with your buddies at a home game. And this week we got a, uh, a an email from friend of the show, Miguel, who told us about a game called AC Ducey Double Potsy. Okay, I don't like the name. All right. But, Never heard it, but I don't like it. All right. Well, here's the thing. And you don't know anything about it's this game. It's not rhythmic so enough. You're going to learn. AC Ducey Hotsy potsy. You know, that'd be good, better, right? All right. Well, you can call it whatever you want, but Miguel <laughs> called it AC Ducey double potsy. All right. And he spelled potsy, I think, like potsy from Happy Days. Okay. Okay. Very good. But here's the thing has nothing to do with Happy Days. All right. And it has nothing to do with AC Ducey, the game that we've talked about previously. Well, this is not getting off to a good start. All right. It's, not, it is <laughs> instead, excited. it is a five card draw game, poker game. Okay. All right. And here's the way that it works. Okay. You. Win the pot if you win two hands of this draw poker game. You actually get a leg okay. for the first time that you, you know, win a, a hand. And then when you get your second leg, that's when you win the pot. Okay. It's five card draw. Five card draw. Okay. Right? Basically, you have to win twice to win the pot. So what's the – is there anything – So let's go through the mechanics okay. of it. Yeah. So here's how it goes. The everybody gets everybody antes, right? And everybody gets five cards, just like five card draw. Deuces are wild. Okay. That's okay? the deucey part. That's the deucey part. Deuces are wild. In order to open, a player has to have a pair of aces or better. Okay. So there's the AC part. Right. That's the AC part. So we talked about in a previous podcast uh, a five card draw game where you have to have jacks or better to open. In this game, you have to have a pair of aces or better to open. So you have to have an ace and a deuce, two aces or two deuces. Right. You can have a wild card to make your aces. Or yeah. trips so any, or something. Anything, yeah. yeah, or anything that's better. And you can use a wild card to get there. So in order okay. to open, you have to have a pair of aces or better. So if nobody has a pair of aces or better, everybody just chucks their cards into the muck. It's shuffled again. Everybody re-antes. Okay. Right? And you deal again. Okay. Once somebody has opened with a pair of aces... Then it's just typical betting, like you would at any uh, five-card poker hand, right? right? So there's betting and raising and folding and what have you. And then people uh, draw their cards. Now, according to Miguel, you can draw anywhere from one to four cards. But in order to draw four cards, you have to have an ace. I've always thought this is well, this is a bad rule. Right. It, it's it's common in home games to have this rule. Right. But what's the point? Right. What I mean, why do you have to have an ace? Let a guy who wants to draw four cards a, to a jack, right. let him do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'll keep a three and uh, <laughs> give me four. <laughs> so you know, in in real quote unquote five card draw, you can draw anywhere from zero to five. Right. But in in the game that Miguel said is he said, okay, in order to draw four, you have to have an ace. Again, plus then everybody knows you have an ace. Right. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. All right. But anyway, everybody makes their draw, right? Now, anybody who folds at any time is out of the game completely. 
Okay, the good roll there. Right. Like so that once you fold, you're out. You sit back and just watch TV until the game's over. Yeah. Okay. What's on TV? Uh, the baseball game. Nice. Yeah. Right. So uh, everybody draws, and then there's another betting round, mm-hmm. and then everybody who's still in the hand shows whoever has the best hand gets a leg. Okay. They don't win the pot. Just get a leg. They get a leg. Right. And then you redeal again, only to people who are still in, only to people who haven't folded. And uh, there's a re-ante for everybody who's still in and another redeal. Same kind of thing. Aces are better to open. Yeah. Right. Oh, and you don't need any special hand to win. You know, in, in our other game, we were saying you had to have like, uh, in a game we talked about Trips before. Trips are better or something. But no, if, even if you just only still have a pair of aces and that's the best hand. You win. You win. So again, you just deal it again. Same rules, same kind of thing. And either another player will get their first leg and you redeal again, uh-huh. or the player who already had a leg will win and get their second leg. Okay. Right? So double potsy is because there's you have to ante at least twice? It's just you're winning like two pots, I guess, right? Yeah, you have to ante at least twice. Right. And there's betting right. each time, right? Yeah. I don't know. I was expecting double potsy, some big, you know, pot builder type game. Well, you know, it can be a big pot builder because think about this. If you get down to like two people and everybody's folded, you could go several rounds where neither one has aces or better to open. Yeah. Right. If it's I just suppose. two people. Right. right? You know, right. and it could go for a while, even though it's just Andy that's building up the right. pot. But uh, so as a tight player and in quotes aggressive. <laughs> When are you going to fold out of this game? All right, so let's talk about this. I'm one gonna, guy gets one leg. I'm no, I'm going to fold very early on if I don't have a deuce. We've talked about this before too. In a yeah. game like this with wild cards, if you don't have a deuce at the beginning of the game, get out. Yeah, because, I can see your point because if you stay in, you're probably not going to win that hand, and some guy's got a leg. So right. now you're he was one leg away from winning everything. Yeah. You still need two, right? So and unless you're really taking a big gamble, you're better off getting out early. Getting out early. And a lot of times with these games that keep going, you might get to the point where you cannot fold because of the pot odds you're getting all of a sudden. Right. You know, if you're right. playing this limit, you know, which you probably you should be, um, you know, and you're, you're in so far, it's like, well, now I have to stay in. Right. So uh, certainly with wild, unless you're dealt a pat hand, unless you're dealt a straight or a flush straight off, if I don't have a two, I'm folding right. right at, you know, in that first round. Now, once I've gotten to the, once somebody has a leg and we're in the next round, well, then there are other things to take into account. Are there only three players? Well, in that case, you know, maybe if you have, you know, like a pair of aces or, or, you know, if you have three of a right. kind or, or a flush draw, then maybe you do stay in. Cause now with only three players, there aren't going to be as many deuces out there. And, right. you know, so. It makes a difference if you're already if you're in those subsequent deals. You know, maybe you stay in more. Yeah. Um, well, if you got seven players and there's thirty five cards out, right? Plus, That's plus draws. You know, there's going to be a lot of deuces out. If you don't right. have a deuce, what, what are you staying in for? Right. I get out early yeah. in that situation. Right. But again, as you go further in the game, and maybe you're just heads up. Well, in that situation, then you know you're probably not folding at all. If if one of you is right. able to open, chances are if you don't have a deuce. He doesn't either. Well, I mean, that's not completely really true, true, but right. I mean, the chances are, chances are neither one, neither one you have a deuce. There's, there's a, a fairly there's, good there's chance. There's 10 right, cards right, out right, of 52. Right. So, um, but, uh, well, anyway, you get, you see what I'm saying. So, right. I mean, that would be my, we've never played this game. No, you know, he just, so. he just told us about, I uh, just got the email recently. Well, it, on the surface, I'd say it doesn't sound like a bad game. I guess what you'd want to do too, it's, I was, cause I was thinking like on that first round when nobody has any legs, like, what's the point of betting at that point? Because, you know, you're right. building a pot. But I guess you'd want to bet maybe to get people to fold. Maybe. You know, and then, you know, you have more well, of a chance of winning. Well, if you think you're going to win that, you're a leg up on everybody. So maybe right. maybe you do want to build up the pot, you know. Yeah. And that'll get some guy in the second round to fold because, you know, he doesn't want to put more money into that. I right. don't know. Yeah. I guess you'd want, if you had one leg... You'd want fewer people in there. Oh, definitely. Right? Because oh, most definitely. You, you know, you want to win the pot. But if, right. if nobody's folded, you've got one leg and there's still seven other players, yeah. where chances are you're not going to win the next hand. Somebody else is going to get their first leg, right? And suddenly right. you're not, you know, in the lead anymore. So. Right. And once there's two guys with a leg, you could, you know, another guy could try and bully you around to yeah. Yeah. re-raise against you even with nothing. I mean, you know, they're more likely to do that if they've got a leg than if they don't have a leg. Yeah. So... Yeah. That's, well, I'll tell you what, Miguel. Not a bad game. We'll play it. Come up with a better name, though. 
Okay, I don't I, like I don't, AC Ducey Double Boxing. I don't know if he created the name or not. Well, but, he can still come up with another name. All right. Well, and if you can't, our good friend Paul, that's his thing, yeah. naming stuff. Yeah. He'll come up with a good name. Or he'll just miss, he'll misname it, or he'll mispronounce it something. Yeah. You know, AC Ducey Double Duty or something. Yeah, right? Double he'll say, Duty. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, that's not bad. AC Ducey Double Duty. And Duty spelled D O O D I E. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Double duty game. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, so that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, email us with questions and comments at you can bet on that at gmail.com. Oh, and you know what? I was talking to my wife too. We were talking about top, uh, possible future topics for the show. And she, she suggested great gambling movies or TV shows. There you go. You know, or scenes from, from movies and TV shows. Now I know other podcasts have done like, movies like poker related yeah. or you know maybe you know horse racing related that kind of thing but since we're gambling recreational gambling any kind of gambling so any kind of gambling i know you and i could come up with a bunch of oh, movies yeah. off there's, the top of our heads already few, yeah. but if anybody has some suggestions for tv shows or movies dealing with gambling that are kind of head and shoulders above the rest let just us know. real quick i gotta say this real quick before it escapes my mind yeah but i'll tell you tv show best gambling on a tv show that gomer pile episode <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that. All right. And if you ever We're showing our Gomer, age. <laughs> if, you, if you ever watch that Gomer Pyle episode where he's playing poker with yeah. the guys in the barracks, yeah. that's hilarious. All right. Yep. I'll have to dig that up so we can, I can watch. I haven't seen yeah. that scene in a long time. <laughs> All right. Uh, don't forget to visit our website. You can bet on that.com. You can check out our show notes and leave comments. Also, follow us on Twitter. At you can bet on that. You know, we let you know when we're on our way to a casino and Mike's trying to give away money, apparently. Yeah, to it's up to sixty dollars now, Mark. Yeah, sixty dollars right. unless your name is Steve Stevens. Yeah. You get nothing. Yeah, that's right. So come up, you know, if you say yeah, my my name's David Davis. <laughs> we might, you know, yeah. look at you a little cross eyed, but uh you'll yeah, still get your sixty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> and like us on Facebook. We've got a uh, Facebook page, Facebook.com slash you can bet on that. And don't forget to review us on iTunes, because that's a great way for us to get new listeners. Anything else? Nope, I think I'm good. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Good night. Bye.